Here are four core ideas that I try and think about whenever I'm lighting something. So before setting up any extra lights, let's do a quick test with what we've already got. This time, I'm not really liking this look with the windows coming in from the sides. So let's close the curtains, giving us a blank slate. Now we can get our lights, but not until we've tried out every single light switch that we can find. Some of them are a bit odd with lots of shadows on that back wall and others are clearly impractical. But this fluorescent above the stage, now that's something we can work with. So with top down lighting like this, it won't really wrap around whoever's standing underneath it unless we diffuse it. I'm using this scrim that Westcott sent me and that'll spread the light out onto a larger space. So here's our first problem. How can we rig this diffusion? First thoughts are to use light stands, but they'll probably show up on camera. So looking closely at the ceiling, there are some little loops we could put string through to hang up the diffusion. Now, of course, we haven't brought any string and we're about to use a power cable instead when Jamie goes and finds a whole bunch of string in a box. Now we can run the string through those loops on the ceiling and tie it to each corner of the diffusion. After checking the strength of the knots, we've got a fairly nice setup without using any extra lights or any light stands. So we could definitely go with that look, but once we move over to this angle, suddenly Jamie's silhouette doesn't stand out from that dark background. So let's add some light, and we're gonna use our second core idea to decide where to put it. Now looking at this frame, it's pretty clear where the light is. The left side is bright, and the right, not so much. So we can imagine that any light on Jamie would naturally come from that side. Based on that, we should put our light right here. But small problem there, the camera can see it. So we'll use our third lighting principle, hiding the light. Now this is the classic situation. You know exactly where you want your light to go, but for whatever reason, you can't put it there. Moving it to the side would mean that the camera can't see it, but we'd lose that nice backlit look and some of the authenticity of the motivated light. So there's one thing we can still do. Move the light up. Now I'm using the Westcott Flex that they sent me, but these ideas apply no matter which light you use. So again, we'll bring in some more diffusion to spread out the light, rigging it up with a light stand on one side and a C stand on the other. But this time the light isn't directly above him. It's in front since we're simulating the light from the stage. And that's what we keep going back to, using gels or the temperature control to make sure that the color of the light matches, blocking the back of the light so it doesn't spill onto the stage. These are all measures we can take to try and convince the audience that this extra light does not exist. And finally, the other thing I try and remind myself is to experiment with light. On this shoot, we actually had a bit of time left over. So I grabbed the COB120T that Aperture sent me and didn't use any diffusion at all. Because I think it's all too easy to just get stuck always using natural light, always trying to make things look realistic. By doing that, aren't we missing opportunities to make something that could be more expressive, could have more of an impact? Ultimately, that depends on the project and it depends on the scene. But it never hurts to ask yourself, should we try something unpredictable? My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.